Hey everyone, welcome to episode two of What I Watched This Week, a show where we look at movies that I watched this week. So the first movie that I took a look at this week was Diary of a Wimp. What the fuck is this? What the fuck? This is baffling. This is fucking garbage. Oh my god. Get get this shit off my screen right now. Diary of a Wimpy Kid, Kid Roderick Roderick Rules. To get this one started, I just want to say that I really, really like this movie. Uh, simply put, it's it's just a fun time. It's not going to blow you away. It's not the greatest movie I've ever seen, but it's just a good time. It's a fun watch. It's a fun family movie. I think the main reason that this movie is as good as it is, despite being, you know, your run-of-the-mill family comedy, is that the performances from the main character and this family are really good, especially Devin Bostic as Roderick. Aside from being a dreamy looking guy, he's a great actor. Um, the acting from the side characters could be better, namely uh, Peyton List as Holly Hills. It was cool hanging out with you. I'll look for you tomorrow. Greg. I don't know what she's doing in this. I'm gonna criticize child actors. That's not my problem. This movie's got great writing with a lot of good jokes that still hit the same, you know, 11 years after the movie came out. It's competently shot and edited, and like I said, it's a good story. It won't knock your socks off, it's not gonna blow your mind, but it's a very funny and a nice nostalgia trip that works for what it is. I think one of the major things this has going for it is that the author of the books, Jeff Kinney, was involved in making the movie, which is a big, big deal that can help the movie go the direction it's supposed to go. The movie was also shot on film, which may basically means it's an art house film as far as I'm concerned, and you have Steve Zahn delivering a tour de force performance as dad. What was General Grant? doing on the thermostat you know, all told I think for what it is which is a silly family comedy uh, it works great as that and it's an overall three out of five stars for me I think also they need to do the world a favor and not do any remakes because this it just shows how much worse this could have gone don't remake these movies don't reboot them I don't want to see that shit. So sticking with the theme of family, the second movie that I watched this week and the second movie I'm going to be going over this week is Yorgos Lanthimos, Killing, Killing of a Sacred Deer. Deer. I, uh, I hate this movie, and I mean that in the best way possible. This movie is through and through just an uncomfortable experience from literally the opening shot of an opening heart surgery to that last incredibly uncomfortable and unnerving scene every cut every pan every zoom is designed to make you squirm in your chair and to make your palms sweat this film is also full of excellent performances especially barry keoghan as uh the creepy kid and nicole kidman is great in this movie as well her character is really interesting and i like seeing how her character changed uh, more on Barry Kehogan. He was awesome. I did not like his character at all. And again, in the best way possible. He freaked me out, and I really wanted him to get his comeuppance. I also really love just the story in this movie and the sort of idea that you have Colin Farrell, the doctor, who plays God with his patients' lives, and he meets, comes across his equal, this boy who's playing devil and forcing him to make this almost impossible decision to take you know the lives of one of his own family members it's really well done and like i said incredibly gripping incredibly unnerving the dialogue in this movie also has that signature you know yorgo slant the most like deadpan sort of delivery everyone does it pretty well i think it serves the movie really well i compare it to kind of the dialogue in the lobster where it's very like um verbose 
and deadpan, but it works and it only adds to this movie's feeling of unease. I also really, really like the cinematography in this movie, as well as the lighting. I like the use of zooms and the use of slow pans. Again, just all there to build tension and make you make your palms sweat, pretty much. I feel like I need to add, but it's definitely not a movie that everyone is going to like. I know people that have very mixed feelings on this movie that think it's pretty out there, kind of uncomfortable, like to the point where they don't like watching it. But I think that's what makes this movie so good. It's that it's uncomfortable. Not everyone's going to like it. But I think that criticism is fair that not everyone's going to like it because they're creeped out by Barry Keoghan, which I certainly was. I fucking hate that kid. All told, I think The Killing of a Sacred Deer is an excellent gripping thriller that about the destruction of a family that's crafted with the keen eyes and the dry wit that you come to expect from Yorgos Lanthimos. Overall, in my opinion, this movie ends up being an easy four and a half stars out of five. I loved a lot of aspects of this movie. Uh, the only thing that takes away from it is the Ellie Golding song that I know nobody likes and they shoot the kid from mid 90s and uh yeah that's gonna do it for episode two i i watched some more stuff but it was stuff i didn't see as noteworthy or uh am saving for a later video just want to say again thanks for watching remember to subscribe and comment some thoughts on these movies i would love to hear it you guys take it easy and i'll see you next week for episode three Also, the NBA dunk contest fucking sucked.